What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I Graham G. S. So Matthews break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the February 12th, 2024 edition of Raw Talk from last night. No Matt Camp again this week. He was replaced by Sam Roberts. So I don't know if Matt Camp's going to be making it back on the show, if he's busy on Mondays now. I'm not sure. I think Scott Stanford was on the show. On SmackDown Lowdown, I know he was. Maybe on Raw Talk last week he was as well. Um, he did. Yeah, Scott Stanford looking at my notes from last week. Filled in for Matt Camp. This week it was Sam Roberts. He did a fine job. I thought he and uh, Megan Morant did a fine job of recapping all the big headlines from uh, Monday's Raw which is what they did to open up the episode here. Um, they also talk about the Rollins promo with Cody Rhodes. Sam Roberts says that Rollins really wants to be involved in this Cody, Rock, Roman debacle going on right now. And then he has Cody's back, probably setting up that tag team match for Mania. Likely for night one, I would have to imagine. If they don't go in that direction, and I'm honestly perfectly fine if they don't, I am hyped for that eventual likely tag team match. If they don't, that's okay too. I don't think we need back-to-back -back Mania main events with Rollins and Rhodes and then Rock and Roman. It would give Rollins a main event on night one, but you can easily have him headline night one with McIntyre or anyone else anyway. So I wouldn't really do that, but it is a match they got me excited for here and in the Mania teaser trailer that aired the other day. Um, they replay the Jey Uso New Day win over Imperium in six-man tag team action to open up Raw last night. They preview Gunter and Jey Uso, who will collide for the Intercontinental Championship next week on Raw. Sam Roberts says that, you know, talks about Jey Uso's goal of winning singles gold in 2024. He says it's right now more difficult than probably any other point to win singles title gold in WWE. When you look at the champions of Logan Paul, Gunther, Roman Reigns, Rollins, all very dominant. And he kind of doubts Jey Uso's chances, but he does give him, you know, some credibility going into that match next Monday night. They replay the LA Knight-Ivar match with LA Knight beating Ivar to qualify for the Men's Elimination Chamber match, which will determine the number one contender to the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. We hear from LA Knight with Kathy Kelly, who is now on Raw Talk, uh, switching from Fridays to Mondays. She interviews LA Knight backstage here. LA Knight says that he hasn't gotten a lot of congrats as of yet on the main roster. I mean, he did when he acknowledges the SummerSlam Slim Jim Battle Royal back in August. But beyond that, aside from becoming one of the fastest rising megastars in his own words here in WWE, and he isn't wrong. Um, he hasn't won any championships yet. He failed to win the world title twice over on SmackDown um, at Crown Jewel and Royal Rumble, respectively. So he says he doesn't really have a lot to hang his hat on up, up to this point, but he wants that congrats after he wins the Elimination Chamber and again after he goes on to win the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Back in the studio, they replay the Bobby lashley Bronson Reed match. A good Haas fight. I fucking hated that Bobby won. Uh, Bobby being in there is great. I like Bobby. Bobby's awesome. It's not about Bobby. It's about the fact that Bronson Reed, unless they can come up with something for him for that show in the next week on Raw, on next week's Go Home show, he doesn't have a spot on an Elimination Chamber show in his own country. Bobby does not need to be on that show in that match. That didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. They've, they've done a lot of starting and stopping with Bronson Reed so far on the main roster. It's frustrating. The guy's better than that. He's been doing a whole lot of nothing lately. He'll win sometimes and never really win when it matters most, like here. And that's an issue. So, I like the match. Hated the fucking outcome. We hear from Bobby and the Prophets and BFAB afterwards. Still without a name for their faction, by the way. Now it's instead of Bobby Lashley and the Street Prophets, now it's Bobby Lashley, the Street Prophets, and BFAB. So, kind of a long faction name if you want to call them that. Bobby says he's excited after qualifying, but isn't ready to celebrate yet until after he wins the Elimination Chamber, and again, like LA Knight said, win the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. Um, he does say that he's beaten everyone in the Chamber that has qualified so far. That's not accurate. He did... I think he beat Orton on Raw. Orton is qualified. He beat Orton on Raw back in 2021, I want to say. It, it gets forgotten about by the Big E, the, the overshadowed by the Big E cash-in from that same night, but I'm pretty sure he beat Orton by pinfall, to qualify for the, or not to qualify, but to retain the WWE title that night. Obviously, he beat McIntyre a whole bunch of times back in 2021. Um, so it's them three and LA Knight. I don't think he's ever beaten LA Knight before. Maybe they had a match on SmackDown? I don't remember. I remember interviewing LA Knight as Eli Drake back in the day in TNA, and he said one of the matches he always wanted was against Bobby Lashley. Again, unless I'm forgetting something, maybe they did have a match in TNA. Maybe that's what he's thinking of. Um, I don't remember LA Knight and Bobby ever going one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe they have on SmackDown. Maybe I should probably go look it up after I'm done recording here and kind of jog my memory. I don't remember LA Knight and Bobby Lashley ever having a one-on-one -on -one match. 
And if they did, it was probably in TNA. If not, I don't know why you would say that. Maybe he, re- maybe they, you know, recorded this before LA Knight qualified on the same on the same show. I don't know. But regardless, um, we hear from BFAB, and she says that Bobby has successfully reclaimed his focus. Montez Ford acknowledges Bronson Reed's tweet about, "Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't qualify for Chamber in my home country, and I'm ashamed," and blah blah blah. I'm hoping they turn that into a storyline. I saw the video that Dotcom posted with uh, Reed after his loss. And he wasn't acting like a heel. He was kind of in babyface mode. So maybe they're turning him babyface and they still find a role for him on the show. I don't know, but I thought that was interesting. Uh, and then Dawkins says that the road is all about pride and power. And uh, they're looking forward to Elimination Chamber. So honestly, they didn't acknowledge that here. But I think pride and power would be a pretty cool name for the Lashley Profits BFAB Alliance. Um, I know the term. I know I don't, it might still be in Bobby's bio. I don't know. But they were calling them the Pride. That was the new name from uh, Wrestle Votes, from at Wrestle Votes about a month or so ago. Bobby put that in his bio. It might have already been in there. That they were calling them Bobby in the Prophets on TV, the Pride, which they haven't officially called them on the show yet. But their faction name internally was called the Pride. If they call them Pride in Power, I think that's a lot better. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, they should probably get a faction name now that there's more than you know three members. There's four of them, so the Almighty Prophets would have worked. They could still go with that. But now that they have BFAB, Pride and Power might be a bit better. So back in the studio, they preview the men's Elimination Chamber, as well as the upcoming qualifiers with Logan Paul taking on The Miz on Friday SmackDown, Miz taking on, uh, oh no, Kevin Owens, Miz taking on Logan Paul, Dominic Mysterio taking on Kevin Owens, that's what it was. And then finally here we hear from Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae backstage with Jackie Redman. Indy says victory in next week's last chance Elimination Chamber qualifying battle royal would mean going home to Australia. Another, you know, Australian native not on the Elimination Chamber card as of right now. I think Indy Hartwell and Candice versus um, the Kabuki Warriors would have made sense. It's probably a little too late to be building that up. Indy and Candice have almost no credibility. They're not over. They have very little wins. Probably a little too late for that. But that would have worked, though, as a tag team title, you know, title match on that show. They're not going to win, obviously, but India at least getting a match in her home country would be cool. I still think she might win that match. Anyone else in that battle royal? Zoe Stark, who cares? Uh, Shayna, not necessary. Candice, no, obviously. Um, Unless they throw in, like, Jade Cargill or someone like that, and they might have other SmackDown superstars in that battle royal, I think India would make the most sense. You know, LeRae also says here she acknowledges the stakes of the winner of that battle royal, going on to WrestleMania to face Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. And if Indy was in there, she's not winning, obviously. But she does say if, uh, you know, you win the chamber, you could face Rhea Ripley or Nia, whoever, for the Women's World Championship at WrestleMania. And they both want to win. And uh, Jackie says, well, there's no friends in Battle Royals. And then Indy says, yeah, we're not friends. We're family. So we'll see if they turn on each other next week. Not, like, officially, but, like, in in, in a friendly manner, in a friendly fashion to, uh, you know, have them just tease this, tease the idea of Indy going on on her own, and she probably should win. I would say she should win that thing, be in the chamber, in her home country. Not going to win the chamber, obviously, but it'd be a great opportunity for her. They really haven't done a whole lot with Indy since she came up from NXT last year, so that's what I would do anyway. And then to close out the show here, Sam Roberts says that he wants uh, Chelsea Green to qualify in next week's Battle Royal. They recap Liv Morgan beating uh, Zoe Stark to qualify. They preview the Women's Elimination Chamber match. The number one contenders world women's chamber qualifier match, like I said earlier. Um, they also replay Sami Zayn, losing to Shinsuke Nakamura in the night's main event. They preview Cody Rhodes versus Drew McIntyre for next week's Raw, as well as the DIY and Awesome Truth eight-man tag team match against the Judgment Day. And we're also getting Uso and Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship, which I mentioned earlier. So pretty stacked show for next Monday's Raw, which I'm looking forward to. They plug Big E for the bump on Wednesday and also hype Roman Reigns in The Rock for SmackDown on Friday. So a lot to look forward to right now in WWE. Uh, good show here. I thought Sam Roberts did a fine job. I don't know what's going on with, uh, you know, Redmond, not Redmond, but uh, Megan Morant and Matt Camp being the regular duo for these shows. They have been for months since Jackie left for Raw, and Megan and Matt Camp have been the, they haven't really been, like, no one has filled in for either of them at all. So maybe Matt Camp has taken time off. You might have some other stuff going on. I don't know. So I thought Sam Roberts did an okay job, though. Uh, thank you guys for checking out my review. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.